thought I'd make a video on a introduction of Tony Yoka and his impressive first choice of opponent for his pro debut. So a little bit about Tony Yoka first. He started boxing when he was only six years old. I'm sure he has a quite impressive amateur record, but I can't find anything about it quite yet, though I'm sure it will come out eventually. He won a silver medal in the Youth World Championships in 2010. He got a gold medal in the Youth Olympics in 2010. He got a bronze medal in the European Games in 2015. He won a gold medal in the World Amateur Championships in 2015. And he then went on to win the gold at the Olympic Games last year in 2016. Some names that he's beat, Joseph Parker, who's the, obviously the current WBO belt holder. He beat him in the Youth Olympic Finals in 2010. He also beat Joe Joyce in the Summer Olympics. I'm sure there's a few other names in there. Um, he's about six foot five and a half to six foot seven, depends where you look. He's probably, I think he's closer to six foot five and a half from the look of him, to tell you the truth. He's got an 82 inch reach and he weighs 230 pounds. Uh, when I've been watching Yoka, a few things I notice is he picks his punches well, he paces himself well, he's very quick, he has quite good footwork. That's the things that really stand out when I'm watching him. There are some questions about his chin. He has been stopped before by an opponent that uh, Anthony Joshua fought in the, the Olympics in 2012. I forgot his name, a Cuban now. So there are some worries about his chin from some people but um, Anthony Joshua was always was also stopped in the amateurs as well and he stood up quite well against uh, Vladimir Klitschko's punches a few weeks ago when he fought him. Saying that though Anthony Joshua has put on a, a lot of weight since his amateur days Tony Yoka doesn't look like the kind of boxer that's going to be putting on a lot of weight but when you listen to Tony Yoka things that are very important to him are his speed so I can't see him getting too far above the 230 pounds, even though I'm sure he will. He's only 24 still. He probably put on, will put on some more weight, but I can't see him wanting to put on this right uh, the kind of muscle mass Anthony Joshua has put on because speed, like I say, is very important to him. He already has quite a large following. He's got 32,000 followers on Twitter before he's even made his pro debut, which is probably the same as what Anthony Joshua had at that point of his career. As well, he's got more followers than the likes of Kubrat Pulev, Gerard Washington, Izzo Uganu, Daniel Dubois. So he's looking to be the the face of French boxing. I would say he also has uh, things that are going to go from well. Like he has a good personality. He's charismatic. He speaks English well. He's looking to fight over in America once, at least once a year. From what he's saying so far, maybe things might change, but he's talking about wanting to fight in Madison Square Garden and in Las Vegas as well. He says he really wants to make his name through in America, which from what I've heard from a lot of American boxing fans, is pretty difficult to do. There's, um, there's not a lot of big names in the heavyweight division through in America, apart from Deontay Wilder. So he's going to have a tough time trying to make his name through there. But um, just like I say, he's, he's kind of got the personality to win fans over and he can speak English very well, so he might well do it. We'll see. The one thing that really impressed me about Tony Yoka is his first choice of opponent for his pro debut. I remember, well, I just yesterday I made a video on Daniel Dubois and Daniel Dubois fighting on Saturday and how it's normal for promoters to, to find no hopers for them to knock out and look impressive for their first few or in some cases their first 15 or so fights uh, and this isn't the case with uh, Tony Yoka he's fighting a quite impressive fighter for his first for his pro debut in Travis Clark an American fighter now, why am I impressed with this choice of opponent well, Travis Clark, he's got uh, 12 wins, no losses, he has 8 KOs, so he's got 
some punch and power at the lower level. Um, he's got a lot of uh, first round and second round knockouts for only having 12 fights as well. And he's just ranked outside the top 100 in box rec. And there's about 1,300 active boxers right now that have fought in the past year. So to fight someone just outside the top 100 of box rec, uh, Travis Clark, just be a bit more specific, is ranked 102 in box rec right now. is quite impressive. So he's, he's taken on an undefeated fighter who has the United States state heavyweight title. Um... The guy's six foot one, two hundred and thirty two pounds. So he's he's not huge. Um, but just like I say, he's undefeated, he's ranked just outside the top hundred in box wreck. And it's quite a brave first choice of opponents, considering the normal thing to do is just to fight no hopers for your first uh, quite a few or even like I say, fifteen, even twenty fights. So it's a it's a good first choice. I mean, he's trying to show how good he is right from the start. So I will be looking forward to this fight. I will watch it uh, if it's on Sky Sports, which I'm sure it will be, or Box Nation. If not, I'll be watching it on YouTube the day after, or a few hours after it's finished. So I just thought I'd do this short video on Tony Yoka.